So, as we can see, one of those subjects, which is there on number three, it's about product place, promotion, people, and price, right? Yes, price, which is called the marketing mix. Did you ever hear about that? Do we know about marketing? What, what kind of word is in there already? If you talk about marketing, which, which part of it? Market, of course, yes, right. So market and marketing. is actually about it's about market getting how to get the market I want to sell something could be a product or maybe a service and now I'm wondering I'm asking myself how do I get this market how can I sell my product to the people who want it or how can I make them want me to sell something to them? That's marketing. Let's say this is a hand. <laughs> Looks a little bit like a hand, isn't it? Like this. So we could say, These are the five P's of marketing. This is a hand, right? And what I want is to get this market. So there's the market, I grab it, pull it towards me, and then I look, how is this market? How do I get this market? To get this market, I need this hand, right? And there are five P's to get that market. The first one, for instance, could be your product. What do we mean by that? Product, yes, Damaris? Exactly. Give, can you give an example? I have a retail shop. Uh, hey, sorry, I want to. I have a retail shop. A retail shop? Yeah. Yes. It depends on what I'm able to give to the market. Like if I'm selling salts, I'm selling salts, yes. I'm selling salts, I'm selling foods. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. That, that is what I'm Exactly, exactly. So. First one will be product, okay? So everything you can sell to a market, oranges, bananas, but also cars, for instance, right? They're all products, you can sell that. Now, imagine that um, you're a bookkeeper, right? You can do administration work. So what is it that you sell then? Books? Pencils? A service, exactly. Then it's a service, right? Because if I'm a bookkeeper, I'm not selling a product. You can hold it in your hands, but it's a service. I have knowledge about something, and somebody else wants my knowledge. So I do something for him, like bookkeeping, and this person is paying me for this knowledge I'm offering, this service I'm offering. And I can calculate that in hours, right? Okay, so product or service, we put that together. That's one. Let's talk about people. What do we mean by that? What's, what, what do we mean by people? Anyone, what do you think? Damaris, she's good at marketing, huh? The target group. Sorry? The target group, the people you the are. The target group, exactly. Percent. Yes, yes. Is that the same what you wanted to say? Yeah, I wanted to say who are the consumers of products are Exactly. Who are the consumers? Who is going to buy my product or my service? Right? People. Who is my target group? Can you give examples of target groups? What could be a target group? It depends on what you're selling on the product. Yes, exactly. So you already see the connection between those two, right? Yeah. If I sell women clothes, 
then men are not my target group, right? So a target group could be women, could be children, could be musicians, artists, uh, people who do a lot of sports, could be businessmen, could be, I don't know what, you name it. There are thousands of target groups you could think of. But it's very important to define your target group, right? Because if you would sell women's clothes and I'm targeting on the men, it won't work, right? That's simple, isn't it? Okay, good. So, let's take another one. Place. What can you tell about place? Raphael. Place is your location. Yes. Exactly. Exactly. That's where do I locate my business. That's the place. It could be in a shop or in a shopping mall, you know, a nice space you rent in a shopping mall. Could be a stall somewhere. Could be outside on the street, a little shop outside, whatever. Okay, on the market, that's the place. That's what we mean by place. Now there's an important one too, which is called price. So what can we tell about price? Of course, that's the price we charge for the product or the service, right? So what can we tell about price? What's important with this? Yes, Damaris. The allocation of the costs of the commodity you're going to offer to the, to the consumers. Okay, you're already several steps ahead. Yes, the price should be based on the costs you have, right? Okay, that's one very important thing. Another one is, the price should be acceptable, right? It should be a price which people are willing to pay for. But it should be high enough to make a profit. So actually what Damaris says is a combination of these, right? So on the one hand, it shouldn't be too low because then you're not gonna make a profit, you're gonna make a loss. That's not what you want. On the other hand, it should be a price which is accepted. People are willing to pay for it. So how could you find out? How can you find out? Yes? Look at those who are doing the same type of service or products, mm -hmm. see how much they are. But also you look at the purchasing power of that particular community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you can look at other competitors, eh? right? And see what they charge. What's the price of this and that and that with my competitors? And you could maybe adapt your price to that, or you could go higher or lower. Why would you do that? Why would you charge a higher price for the same product? Let's say you sell phones, mobile phones, but you charge more than your competitor. Why would you do that? Um, maybe the cost of the raw materials when you see Yes, okay, that could be, could be, Nelly? Maybe the place you located the business, maybe it's a stall, it's more expensive, it's mm -hmm. bigger, so you don't want to a loss, so you hike the price to be able to meet the costs. Yes, okay. So, could it be a problem? I mean, if I sell the f I buy the phone at your place, and it's much more expensive than the phone in the same street in another shop, where am I going to buy it? It could be a problem because you lose out on customers. They prefer the cheaper area. Yeah. Yes. So what could you do to compensate? Not go too high, be a bit more direct. Like, don't let the price be too, the gap be too big. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If, it's, if the price gap is like 10 shillings, you can go it to 5. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's not a big gap. Yeah, you could do that, of course, okay. There's something else you can do. Yes. Maybe it's telling them you buy two phones and get, I don't know, both for free or something like this. Yes, I get They just buy these things. Exactly. Yeah. Very smart. That's what I'm looking for. Great. Wonderful. Offer another service, maybe a repair shop, or uh, also sell new batteries, right? Or earphones, or cases to put them in, and I don't know what, all kind of stuff around that. Not only the phone, but that uh, actually uh, makes that 
you can charge a higher price because you're offering all kinds of products. Okay? So price is very important. Why? Because many people say the price should be as low as possible. So what happens if you only can compete on price? If you compete on price, what happens? That's what we see outside in the street when they're selling tomatoes or potatoes or, you know, things like that. There's somebody sitting here with a bucket and all these potatoes piled up. We know, right, how they are. And then here's another one sitting with the same potatoes and the same bucket. And there's somebody sitting with the same bucket and the same potatoes, and so on. So what do you do as a customer? You walk on and you say, okay, potatoes, potatoes, potatoes. Price, price, price. Cheapest, I buy them there. So what are they going to do? They're going to lower their price. So tomorrow you're going to buy here. And then the seller over there thinks, oh, he was here yesterday, now he's selling there, price is going down, I'm going to lower my price. So this one is lowering his price. Tomorrow, lowering, 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 and you're not earning anything anymore. So competing on price can put you out of the market. So actually that should be the last thing you do, compete on price, because it's killing. It's really killing. So you could differentiate in products, just as your example tells. Maybe you can sell pineapple with uncut and slices already, wrapped up in a, a plastic bag and sell them like that. So people can take it and it's ready to eat. So then it's the same pineapple, but you add something extra. And then you can charge another price because it's not comparable with the pineapple over there, because you have to cut it yourself, you throw away a lot of things, and maybe you cut on your finger and think, oh my God, now I'm bleeding. No? Okay? There's something else, something very important. What do we know about diamonds? What's the price of diamonds? Okay. What's the price of diamonds? What can we say about the price of diamonds? Hi, huh? Why are diamonds so expensive? Sorry? Yes, there's cars goods. That's right. It takes a lot of work to find them. And if you find them, you have to, you know, I don't know, what, what do you do? All these, 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 these things they have to do, polish them and, you know, it's, it's a hell of a job. And then from this big stone, there's this much left. It takes a lot of hours to get it there. And that costs a lot of money. Let's look at cars, for instance. Do we know these cars like Ferrari and Lamborghini and all those brands, you know, these, these fancy racing cars about this high and then I don't know how fast they go and things. We know these cars? Why are they so expensive? Actually, they do the same with like diamonds. They make it scarce. They say, you know what, we're going to produce 300 of these cars, not thousands and thousands, only 300. And then there are some people like in Saudi Arabia, they say, oh, that's interesting. I want one of them. How much does it cost? Half a million dollar. I don't care. I want one. Because then I buy status. I buy image. Because I am the one driving this car. I can afford it. You know? That's something else people are willing to pay for. Funny, isn't it? It's funny. But that's how it works with price. Okay, so there's one other. Which is called promotion. What's promotion? Elisabetta, you know what promotion is? Okay, tell us about it. Promotion is you have a product. Yes. You cannot sit in the house or in your farm with it. Yes. So you have to go out, convince people okay. what quality you have mm -hmm. of your product. Mm -hmm. And uh, go to city markets, supermarkets, mm -hmm. on the little quality, the quantity, and maybe now talk about it, mm -hmm. promote about it. Mm -hmm. And convince the customer that I have a, the best quality. Exactly. How can I let people know that if they want a bat, they have to come to my place because I use the best wood and I have really good craftsmen who build these bats. 
and they paint it very well. You can never get it anywhere else, only at my shop. So if you want a real good bat, come to my place. How could you do that promotion? Advertisements. Yes, advertisements. Like using the media, the radio, TV. Mm -hmm. yeah. Of course, yes. Media, like radio, TV, advertising, and newspapers maybe. Maybe you can make some flyers and give them to people on the street where it's very busy and where you think, hey, there's my target group. So all kind of things, business cards. If you talk with people, you think, might be a customer, give me a business card. If you, want, if you need me, this is my number, call me. I'll be there, no problem, right? Now, I was drawing this hand on this other piece of paper. I'm trying to make a better one now. Mm, it's not really working, is it? So these are those five P's here. And just like in a hand, they are connected, right? All five of them. If there is one thing to change in these five P's, the other four P's should change too. Let's, give an, let's take an example. Imagine you're a carpenter, you make bats, and you're selling bats. So that's your product. You sell this product to a certain target group. You do this in a certain place to a certain price, and you have a somehow promotion. Okay? Imagine you change the product. You're not selling bats anymore, but you start selling lamps. Is there anything you should change in this, in this five piece? So the product is changing. Can you sell those lamps for the same price? Probably not. There, is, there must be something different in price. Is it the same target group? Could be, yeah. Maybe you are decorating or redecorating the house or moving to somewhere else or to another place. Could be. But the promotion could be different. Or maybe you should move to another place, I don't know. Or imagine you're selling lambs and bats, and then you start selling cars. The product changes again. So there's another target group. Because people who buy bats, maybe they don't even buy cars, right? So it's another target group, it's another price. Maybe you have to move to another place where a lot of people drive by and can see your cars, right? So they're all connected. If one thing changes, the rest has to change too, okay? This frame, which actually is a frame, is very important. You use it when you start your business, you put it in your business plan, you look at your own business and think, okay, let me think about these five Ps. How would it look like? What is it that I'm going to sell? For what price? Where am I going to do that? How do I deal with promotion? And who is my target group? And where can I find this target group? Right? Because my promotion should be focused on that target group and not on all those other people. I mean, you have how many inhabitants here in Kenya? 33 million? 34? Something like that, right? So I can, that could be a huge target group, right? 34 million people, wow. But not everybody is going to buy shoes at my shop, is it? So who's my target group? Only the people in Nairobi. Now, by uh, choosing a certain kind of shoes, I select my target group. Because if it's going to be sports shoes, running shoes, businessmen won't come in because they need different shoes. It should be made of leather and shoe shine and things like that, right? So you should be very careful with that. So you're going to put this in your own business plan. But when you're having your business, when you're running your business already, it's very important to look at this now and then too. Because there might be changes outside in the market and you're not aware of it and you miss a lot, of, a lot of opportunities, okay? All right, this is so far about the marketing mix. Five piece, a hand, connected together. Are there any questions about this? Paul. As an educated man, rather, I, I see myself understanding this concept very well, and maybe how to pursue the business mm -hmm. using this concept. But I also think in terms of, you know, where I come from and how they do businesses. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe 
like, like I see my mother, for instance, when I go to the market, she sells the same. You, you can see a row. Maybe they're selling uh, food stuff like, uh, like like rice. Mm -hmm. So all the women, you know, are in line, you know, with the same rice, the same measurements, yes. the same everything, and uh, they rely on. Uh, I don't know if it is black. They don't follow any religion on this position. But they manage somehow to, to feed their families. Sometimes mm -hmm. it runs out of stock mm -hmm. and they have no even money to, to recoup again. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe us working in town has to help them to, to you know, add up and, and you know, move on. Uh, how, how to help? How to help using this platform? How to help this this type of business? Mm -hmm. what, what do you really call this business? I mean, it is business, of course. Right? That's that's for sure. It is business. I know. I know the picture. Actually, it's. I mean, and you see it in a lot of countries. I've been in Asia, Southeast Asia, in all those countries. It's always the same. They sell tomatoes, but not only this seller sells tomatoes, but they're all in a row. Yeah. So what do they do? The tomatoes are the same. You can even see it. From 10 meters, uh, standing here, I can see one, two, three, four, five sellers. I can see the tomatoes are the same. So what do you do? You look at the price. Of course, you're not, you don't think, okay, who's the most expensive one? Then I'm going to buy the tomatoes there. You look for the cheapest one. So what they do is compete on price. So what you could do, what I think is very important, and exactly what you said when we took the example for the phone company, is to add some products which you might need too. So I could imagine if you sell rice, there is some else, something else. If you're going to boil rice, there is something you need besides that. But maybe if you say, OK, I can sell ugali too, or maybe the flour for chapati. So you have different products. But if they all start doing that, yeah, <laughs> then we're back, on, back where we started again. But I think the. the uh, and that's actually something which you could add here, which is called USP, which is called a short for a unique selling point. This is actually essential for every business. How can you be different from all those others? Unique selling point. What's my unique selling point? I do not only sell rice, but I also sell uh, pots and pans to put this rice in. And I sell water, clean water. Drinking water, you can boil your rice in that or whatever you want to do. I don't know, just make some combinations and start um, to be different than the rest. Then you might survive. So what else is your, your mother selling in the market? If people don't buy them, Women eat them at home. Mm -hmm. That sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So when it's finished, we collect money and then she goes to get the market. And that's how the family has survived. And many families operate So, yeah, I, I understand. This is the theoretical thing. And the practice many times is completely different, I know. So the, the, the trick is, the, 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 the challenge is how to be different. Maybe not selling rice anymore any, at all. And take something completely new but stay in the same place, because the rest doesn't sell that. So look at the rest. What are they doing? That's not what I'm going to do. I'm going to sell something completely different. Are we selling all of them? All these car sellers, are they all selling four-wheel drives? I start minibuses. Are they all selling minibuses? Then I start four-wheel drives, or pickup trucks, or I don't know what. Bicycles, maybe. I don't know. OK, who of the ladies is first, Pauline or Damaris? Ah, she's saying Damaris, she's saying Pauline. So, okay. Damaris. Okay, I just wanted to comment on what Paul is bringing up. Yes. I think we should not overlook something which is very common on imitation. You find that even the prices, when those women are selling, the prices are still the same, the commodities are the same. Mm -hmm. And you find that if uh, somebody observes that I'm selling tomatoes and they are going also comes in with tomatoes so that has been a mm -hmm. So I think there is that lack of 
creativity, which is exactly. lacking because yes. there's a lot of limitation of businesses. Mm -hmm. I start accusing some of those cards next to yes. me, exactly. but it is it is Memphis kind of business. Yes, it's copying. It's just copying. That's what they do in Asia many times. It's copying, copying, and copying. It doesn't bring you anywhere. So creativity is very important. And we're going to talk about creativity because that's it's very, very important if you want to survive in business. Thank you, Damaris. Very good. Pauline. Um, for me, still on the same issue, mm -hmm. I'm looking at uh, the women and serving in the community. I give them loans. Yes. And uh, they start talking. So they start small entrepreneurs. And uh, the issue of copying sometimes has some influencing factors, which is that uh, what is available, the, the, their stock oh, yeah. is determined mm -hmm. by what is available. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like as Paul is saying that you find that, uh, uh, I hope you understand when I say skuma with the kills, eh? mm -hmm. I find that there is kills are available. Onions are available, tomatoes are available. Mm -hmm. Also, another influencing factor is the starting capital. Mm -hmm. It so happens that they all have the same uh, uh, starting capital, the, 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 the margin. Mm -hmm. If they have 1,000, 1,000, that's the much they can afford for starting capital. Then it also influences why they are having the same products mm -hmm. in the market. But uh, what do I do? Now when I find that nearly about five of my women in the same group are selling the same thing. For the same price? Yeah, the and same uh, now we are talking in terms of agribusiness because that is what I do. Mm -hmm. I ask them to do some value addition. I try to train them on adding value to the products they have. That take for example the one who's doing kills, Kumawiki, mm -hmm. we can go as far as uh, chop the best Kumawiki because it's eaten chopped. And part exactly. another exactly. one might decide to, 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 to do it in a different way. Mm -hmm. If it is the tomatoes, some may make it into, into paste, easy mm -hmm. to cook, mm -hmm. and something like that. At the end of the day, is that they'll still be recovering the cost and still making a profit. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, they cannot move from what is available and is what they can sell in terms of cost uh, mm -hmm. or in terms of stock. But again, they are still in business. They are paying back the loan. Yeah. And I found it working. Yeah. yeah. So adding value to your product, differentiate, right? It's also about USP because the one is making the selling the tomatoes like this or chopping them and, and, and making it a, a paste, you, you said, right? And the Skuma Wiki, same thing. Just like I said with the pineapples, you add something special. You make it different than all the others. Maybe you could even, but that's depending on, on, on what's offered on the market, of course. But maybe you could also cooperate. Is that a solution? Do you work with that? I mean, I can imagine you put these women together and say, okay, you do the Skuma Wiki, you do the rice, you do the tomatoes. So then you're not competing with each other. Actually, you're collaborating. Uh, to be realistic, knowing our people, okay. there is a certain level where they can now come together. Mm -hmm. but, and uh, to reach that level, there is where they start from, the, we could say level one, is where they are very simple enterprises. Mm -hmm. But until now they start, uh, they, they start uh, recovering or, or making some slightly bigger profit is when I'm finding fact when they go almost large scale is when I can get them to come into groups and uh, usually that happens in terms of when now they're doing production not mm -hmm. just selling finished product but now they're also doing the production of that product that the farmers mm -hmm. so you can say now you can come together you as the farmers who are doing tomatoes mm -hmm. come together farmers who are doing milk and now they do it that way okay mm -hmm. So that's a creative solution too, huh? You have to be creative. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Are there any more remarks, questions about this topic? Yes. Here, here. There's something that I'm not understanding. Because I walk into a supermarket or any other supermarket and find people from this company, they're promoting either toothpaste or something. Yeah. This is a promotion. At the streets of the Nairobi city, 
you will make these people maybe with some tooth brushes yes. and they're telling you maybe uh, this is a promotion and uh, here if you buy this one tooth brush you will win something but if you don't win you pay me for example 200 shillings mm -hmm. then you buy this thing you don't win and uh, no you win you will actually win something maybe a pen Yes. Just maybe 10 shillings yes. and you pay 200 shillings. What would you say? Is it, is it, is it uh, allowed to, to lie and cheat on your clients? Because you buy these things, you didn't want it, you are interested in maybe the offer or the gift, then you don't find it. Do you think this kind of business is sustainable? What do you think? Personally, I'm disappointed. I don't think I know that they were taking that exactly. exactly. <laughs> Well, I, I agree with you. I mean, if it's about cheating people, cheating your customer, it's the end of your business. What do you do? What do you do as a customer? And you walk in the shop and they cheat you. They're not fair, they're not honest. Are you going there the second time? No. Who is? Who is going the second time? Who's going back there? Nobody is. So, that's the answer to your question. If you cheat your customer, it's the end of story. It's over. Some products, like, they're still in the market, you see them everywhere you can buy them. For instance, this one of, uh, of killing uh, uh, hacks and cockroaches. Yeah. I mean, the, 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 in the screen, it will be like, you know, the thing is dead instantly. You go and spray the cockroaches within your jeans. <laughs> <laughs> but these people still yeah. make this business, and it's yeah. there, and people yeah. buy this thing, you see. Yeah. 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 So, um, it's a lie. What, what, you know. Yeah, I know, I know. Uh, the funny thing is that, um, and that's also about marketing, right? Because marketing, marketing gives you the, the opportunity actually to sell things to people which they actually don't know, don't need, I mean. So let's, let's take an example. I've seen Kenyan TV, right? And then there are these commercials in there where there's a whole happy family and father and mother and kids are running around in a beautiful house and the sun is shining, everybody's healthy and well-dressed, right? And then there comes in the milk. <laughs> you should drink this milk. So actually, what are they telling? If you drink this milk, you will be a happy family, right? You're good looking, you're well-dressed. It's all connected to this milk. That's actually what they're telling you, right? some kind of a fairy tale. Actually, it's a lie, because if drinking this milk, you're not going to get any prettier or a new house or whatever, but it's the whole image around it they create. They connect that to your product. And people think, wow, that looks great. If you're in a supermarket, chances bigger you're going to buy that package of milk instead of the one next to that. That's how marketing works. That's what promotion does with us. Yeah, you should. Okay, any more questions? Yeah. Uh, I was thinking about uh, the five pillars there and in a rural setup that you were talking about. Mm -hmm. um, you realize that these people, they have the products. Mm -hmm. The market is there that the people, and the place, that's the market, mm -hmm. the pricing itself. Now, you have a group of around 10 selling the same product. Mm -hmm. And normally when we talk about them changing the prices, you realize that at certain point, Become more holistic. They are more, more holistic in terms of more prices. Yes. They, are, they have the same kind of pricing. Mm -hmm. And when you ask either one of them, you will realize that one answer that they have is that that's the product they can sell. That is what I know. That's mm -hmm. the only thing I can sell without risking mm -hmm. loss. And now it comes down to promotion. Uh, that is the only focus point to change these businesses because maybe they have everything. Could be, could be. I could imagine at the rural area that the, the, the promotion is very little. You cannot do much about promotion. You cannot start flyering and advertising and radio and TV and things like that because nobody will see it. Nobody will notice. So that's a waste of money. It doesn't make sense. I think it's about the same thing we had in the phone shop and what Paul was telling. and. Uh, Right? The, the, the same things we had. Try to add some value to that product and be creative in that. And we're going to come back on that one later on in other uh, topics, okay? There's another aspect of uh, 
you can see people do business like you tell. Mm -hmm. Before, uh, you may have a shop here. In Kenya, we, we, we sometimes find the important along ethnic lines, for instance. No? Along ethnic lines. Yes. yes. You, you can have a shop, different ethnic groups. And you see the way people practice. Like this is my ethnic group. I go and buy from them. Mm -hmm. So if you if you happen to come from another ethnic group that uh, the majority are not, uh, there is a minority in that community, then you actually don't get the customers as you require. So people like go for something else mm -hmm. rather than really the product that you're selling. Okay, I've seen this in the estate where I come from. If you look at town, for instance, mm -hmm. The businesses of now are taken by a certain specific group of community. Like you can say the Somalis are occupying now, they are taking over from the Indians, particularly the shops that are selling clothes and things like that. Okay. Now, what could, you, what could you say about this kind of dynamics that changes you know, the, the way the taste of people and where people buy things to the extent that it, it, it excludes or take out of business, a certain community. Mm -hmm. Well, I think this is a very interesting uh, point when we talk about the SWOT analysis. Um, because just like this, it's very important to be aware of the fact that there might be changes outside. It could be economic changes or whatever it may be. Um, but you should be aware of that and you should uh, anticipate on that. If you see those changes, you have to ask yourself, okay, what am I going to do? I'm going, I'm going with this change, I'm going to adapt to that, or I, do I quit and, and try something else? I'm going to sell another product or whatever. So if the Somali take over, probably the target group will change too. If I'm Indian and I'm selling something and I'm targeting on the, my, the, the Indian target group, then I might lose my business if I don't change. So whether I'm going to change to the Somali target group or I'm going to move over to, I don't know, another place or another country maybe or whatever. But you have to be aware of that. And in the SWOT analysis, you can really define that. I'll come back on that one later.